I thought I'd give a quick update on how things are going with the desktop version of Ginkgo. So if you've been following along, I've been working on rewriting the, the entire thing basically so that it runs as a desktop app. So the one I'm showing now is not a desktop app, but it's the same code. And part of the idea is so that I'd be able to run the same code for publishing the desktop app as the, as the new version of the online app. Um, because I'm only one developer, I, it makes it very difficult if I have to maintain multiple versions, but thankfully technology is at the point where uh, I can use web technologies throughout. Anyway, bottom line is you will be able to have a downloadable version as well as an online version. So one of the things that is sorely missing from Ginkgo as it currently is, but that I've implemented here is version history. So as, as I make changes, which by the way, I can't type and talk at the same time. So the UI is temporary right now. I'm just a proof of concept. Okay. Um, but see, these are the snapshots of the previous states. Okay. So it's basically undo. Obviously that you'd be able to go back and forth, but beyond this simple view, what's actually happening under the hood is um, inspired by the version control system used by um, the most widely version, uh, the most widely used version control system in software, which is Git. And it stores a snapshot of the entire um, tree at every change. And that becomes very powerful later on, as you'll see. So another important difference between this version and the one that's currently available is that this is an offline first version. And what that means is your data is saved locally on your hard drive first, and then optionally it can sync to my servers or your own servers as well, if, if you're up for that. So that means you have total control of your data and that working offline is not a um, an afterthought. It's actually the way it works first and then it syncs as, as an optional addition. Uh, if you work, entirely online or with a lot of collaboration, I'll, I'll show you that that works just as well as it did before. So if I pull up, okay, so these are two other collaborators. I'll put them online. Okay, so as you see, they they just came online and they received the changes from, from this, this version. So as with Ginkgo currently, I can make changes, but what I've done is I've now added keystroke by keystroke um, sending of the changes as they're, as they're happening. Uh, this may be a little distracting. I might have to change the UI a little bit. So maybe when you're editing, the other person's changes are, changes are not so visible, something like that, because I don't want your own writing to be distracted by your collaborators. But in any case, the changes are synced up. And you can see in real time who's where and who's changing what. Now, when everyone's online, I can just prevent, in order to prevent for, uh, conflicts, so two people changing the same card is not allowed when both people are online. Um, of course, that's not something that can be prevented when some or all of the users are offline. So when we have version history and uh, online offline uh, collaboration, it gets really tricky to merge all of these different changes. But that's that's what I'm gonna show you now that is working. And it's because of the uh, Git-like system that's in the back end. So I'm gonna pull all of these offline. It's just a test. Okay, so new card here. So they're not syncing because, because each one is working offline. Okay. Is that it? All right. So now if I pull them online, 
So these two are online and their change is synced. And then when this one comes online, their change is synced as well. So now you can see that the history that's being stored isn't just a linear history. It stores every version that each person makes, or if it's the same person on two different devices. Um, so what's happening is that when a user makes a change that's offline, it doesn't sync until it comes back on. And when it does, it changes. If there's a change that doesn't overlap, so one person changed card A and the other person changed card B, then both changes are applied. Now, in real life, you can't expect that to happen all the time. Um, and so what you have to do is make sure that there's a conflict resolution mechanism. So I'm going to take them offline again. And let's see. Change some D. And here. Okay. So I changed D in these two, and I changed this card here. So this change should happen without problem because neither of the others have made a conflicting change. So I'm going to bring them online again. Okay, so that change, both of those changes went through, but now there's a conflict. So when this happens, the person who comes online and is trying to send conflicting changes has to make a choice. So there's they can choose the original, their version, the our version, or manually make a change and choose what's. Choose which version to select. Once that's done, you resolve. And now everyone has the new changes and everyone's in sync. So what this does is it makes it so that, un, well, not unlimited. I haven't tested how many people yet. Uh, this is all proof of concept. But it make, makes it so that many people can work both online or offline and not worry about uh, stepping on each other's toes. And when you are online, you won't step on each other's toes because it'll block you from doing so. That's just to prevent um, having this conflicting situation when, when it's unnecessary. Um, so that's what I've been working on. The, the back end for this is um, allows for some very powerful things which I haven't implemented yet and I won't get into, but uh, I'm very excited about them because it's things that um, bring a lot of the power from um, software version control systems to something a little bit more streamlined like a word processor. Um, this this whole display of the of the commit of what the what's called the commit graph of all these changes, it's it's a bit confusing, and so I might have to change. I can probably add whose changes are 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 being seen, or maybe some way of displaying the difference between these two states. I'm not sure yet, but the core um, is working. So the most important thing is that now. All history is stored. It's stored locally, so it's it's on your hard drive. You don't have to worry about uh, servers going down or anything. It's always on your on your device. Um, and if you make a change that conflicts, you don't have to worry about other people. Say this person uh, adds very important information here. Great stuff. And this person decides to delete the parent. So this person goes online, sends that to the servers, but when this person goes online, they're told that, oh, there's a conflict. We're saying that we're inserting this card, but they're saying the delete the parent. Which do you choose? So it defaults to sh showing the insertion. You click Resolve, and it restores it everywhere else. So that's the basics of what I'm working on right now. I have to obviously improve the UI because that's just temporary um, as for the version navigation and for conflict resolution. Um, but I'm excited about how it's working. I'm excited about uh, what will be possible as well beyond that. I'll try to be more um, forthcoming with my updates and work in progress. I tend to go silent for quite a while while I'm working on these things. Um, sometimes it's the only way I can focus and get 
a lot of work done, but I think I overdo it and uh, it doesn't take too much time to put a little update out like this. So I'll try to do that more often. Okay, so if you have any questions or feedback on what you see, um, anything that seems confusing or anything that you'd like to talk about as being changed, something that doesn't work the way you expect, um, this is all eventually going to be released in the next version of the Ginkgo desktop, but I had to rework a lot of things to make this happen, so it's going to be a little while before you can test this yourself. Um, but I'll keep you posted, and uh, thanks for watching.